Hello. Is this the right Audrey Tang? It is the correct Audrey Tang. Um, that's my Skype ID, by the way. Okay. Right. Um, but there are thousands of Audrey Tongs, just so you know. And I had uh -huh. and one is in, one is in Mandarin characters uh -huh. that I don't read. I just had no idea it was right. Good there's morning. there's three three Joes as well. So okay. okay. <clears throat> very good. So good morning. Anyway, yeah. You're very popular, apparently. Good morning. Uh -huh. Hi. Um, yeah. It, well, this is like nine thirty p.m., but good local time. Um, oh, look, where are you, by the way? Where I, are you? I'm in Taipei. I'm in Taipei. Uh, oh. Right. So we're like twelve hours uh, apart. Okay. Good evening. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. So um, yeah, <clears throat> and that's actually the same uh, situation as the most fest, because I'll be uh, teleparticipating also uh, through Skype. Oh, you're not presenting in person? No, I'm not. How come? How come? Well, yeah. first, first of all, as a cabinet minister, it, it requires months of preparation and convincing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And um, Mozilla people thought telepresenting is okay because I did the same thing in uh, Barcelona a while ago, and it seems to work pretty well. Good. Uh, right. Well, in Florence, but yeah, soon in Barcelona too. Yeah. Good. All right, so hold on one second. I just want to grab the mm -hmm. answers to the questions, unless mm -hmm. you want to. Why don't you just walk me through them, actually? Tell me. Uh... Mm -hmm. Sure. Right, so uh, <clears throat> I assume that you mean the presentation training inventory thing? Um, okay, sure. Um, yeah, so my first sentence of my presentation, I actually have a, a uh, script that I used in New York, um, and this is going to be a bridged version of it. So the first sentence um, during that talk is, quote, greetings from the future. I'm literally in the future, eight hours to be exact, uh, which is the case for London. Otherwise, it's 12. Um, so the format is a pre-recorded 10 minutes video. So it's not in person, actually. I need to record a 10 minute video. They play it and follow by 10 minutes Q&A through a crowdsourced question uh, I format. I see. Right. And why do you want to talk? Why do you want to start your presentation about time, the well, future? Right, because uh, the title of my talk is uh, the future of democracy, uh, and the story that I'm going to tell is about um, some very experimental way that in Taiwan we're doing democratic deliberations. So that's the reason. Okay, okay. good. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, question two, what props or visuals do you use to convey your message? So um, for the presentation, I plan on only appearing uh, in the first few seconds uh, uh -huh. and then followed by uh, the presentation itself, which is mostly oh. in emoji. Um, have you seen the presentation? No. Okay, well, uh, I'll just very quickly show it to you. Uh, it's like this. Um, can you see my shared screen now? Yes. Okay, great. So um, the idea is that I will just speak for a few um, sentences and saying uh, for people who want to ask me questions and so on, uh, they can do so on this um, Slido forum. They can use their phones uh, to go to slido.com and enter Tuesday's date, which is 1029. And then uh, after 10 minutes of talk, I will start answering questions. And the format usually looks like this where we have a lot of people asking questions and uh, liking each other's questions. And I will, in the second half of the talk, highlight one of the questions, very quickly answer it, and then archive it away, and then highlight another. That's the basic format. All right, <clears throat> and then so back to the presentation. Um, so um, yeah, the, the beginning, uh, I'll talk about uh, three stories, actually. Well, the first story is about how we occupy the parliament for 22 days. And, and how um, civic technology helped facilitating half a million protesters uh, to peaceful consensus. Uh, and the second story is going to be about the same technology used to solve the Uber regulation issue in 2015 through co-creating regulations. And then uh, it's going to uh, go into some details of the focused conversation method about how we get people's facts and then people's feelings about those facts uh, their ideas about those feelings, the best idea is the best one that reflects people's feelings and sign them into law. 
And so、uh, we use artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on to get thousands of people's opinions on Uber and translate that into a set of regulations that everybody can live with. And so that's how we solved the Uber problem and how I became the digital minister. The third、uh, story is about how I practice radical transparency as an anarchist digital minister since、uh, 2016 by transparently answering all journalists' questions. Everything is on the record, even VR 360 record. Uh, and how we use free software exclusively in our team to boost our creativity, and have one person from every ministry、uh, to participate in this cross-ministerial way, and、uh, to have e-petitions, and、um, and this is this ladder of participation, starting from voting, clicktivism,、uh, to sharing of open data, of real-time feedback, forums, and discussions, all the way to deliberations. So that's the the basic three story that I'm going to tell. Um, and back to the inventory.、Um, how do you prepare for presentations? Do you script draft notes? Notes. I'm not sure what's in notes. Notes. But um, yeah. Um, and then、uh, what's the、uh, winging it? So for pre-recorded videos such as this one, I rehearse several times. Convert recording to transcripts. Edit the transcripts into speaker's notes. Rehearse again and rinse and repeat. So、uh, quite a few <laughs> times, like five times at least.、Um, So, what consistent feedback have you received on my presentations?、Um, well, I, I actually learned a, a lot from the materials you sent me, especially about how I can slow down、uh, to emphasize some points because I do have a habit of talking、um, actually faster than my current speed、um, during talks. So,、um, I, I think I would need to slow down a little bit and condense the material.、Uh, but the consistent feedback have so far been just inspiring, enlightening, and/or mind blowing, and so on.、Um, Um, and, more, what could you ask for, right? So we can today、yeah. maybe you want to work on a little vocal modulation. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That 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 would be awesome.、Um, and so、uh, the difficulty conveying the passion, I, I find public presentation very natural,、um, as well as the idea that bring forward the feelings. I think、uh, I always convey the the feelings first, and then the ideas following the feelings,、uh, especially、sure. on very well rehearsed transcripts like this one.、Um, okay. And I do sometimes mentally leave the room when facing a group of people, not when public speaking, but oftentimes during parties. I hope that's okay.、Uh, <laughs> um, what statistics do you employ?、Uh, I check the transcript. There's no statistics、um, used in my in my script. Perfect. Even better. Right. So, what are the questions you're dreading asked? This is actually a very Very good question, and and I, I thought about it a lot, but、uh, I can't really think of anything. So maybe you can also help me there.、Um, and so, what skills are in my interest? You're practicing in? radical, <laughs> radical transparency. There's very little you dread being at. Maybe your age. I don't know. I'm 36.、Um, yeah. Whatever. We don't even care about that. So,、right. so I don't think you have a whole lot of、uh, things to worry about there. But go on. Right. So, so the last question: What skills am I interested in acquiring, or behavior I would like to change? So actually, we're we're working with. Well, I'm in a very restricted medium because it's、uh, literally just a video, right? That that I have、uh, for ten minutes to deliver. On the other hand,、uh, of course, it enables a lot of visual gimmicks that.、Um, We may or may not use、uh, because it's not in person, right? I can levitate or whatever. Actually, I tried that once. So, but but I think、uh, the easiest thing is just to keep to the visual slides and have the voice、um, carry all the tonality and passion and whatever, and only have my face appear、uh, during the the very beginning and during the transition between the video and the Q and A.、Um, that that's my idea. When,、so、when does When does Audrey tell her story? Where do I get to know how this all began for you, and why this matters to you, and where you came from, and how you got into this? Because I think that's quite important. Sure.、Um, well,、um, you you want me to tell a three minutes version now, or paste you a link or something? No, no. I want to know what you're going to do in the presentation. It, it doesn't look like your presentation had much about you in it,、um, mm -hmm. and I think we need to have a little about you. When do you when do you intend to? Am I correct? First of all, on the video, or is it is there a whole part that's about you? Well,、um, see,、um, I, I, I'm I'm one of the actually the first、uh, person to offer、uh, technology help to the Occupy the day before the Occupy. So it is a intrinsically a very personal story.、Um, 
And uh, the Uber case, I'm the facilitator and also the, the co-chair for the whole thing. So again, it's, it's my story. And of course, the third story is about my work as digital minister. So um, I just don't want to be seen as taking all the credit from the occupiers, but it is very personal. I'm not, no, I'm not interested in, giving, in make, having you take all the credit, but I would like to know how you, mm -hmm. all, at 36, mm -hmm. has gotten to this place. Like, what, mm -hmm. what's your... What's your story, basically? Who are you? Okay, I think everybody needs to know that you know. Right. Maybe maybe you're very mm -hmm. famous to this crowd, but I have not seen. I don't think people know each other. Much no, no, no. no. I I don't think so either. Right. So uh, very quickly. Um, no, take your time. I want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'm 36. Um, I drop off uh, junior high school after going through. Ten different schools, uh, counting from kindergarten. Uh, and uh, after I dropped out, I founded a uh, internet search engine company with a few friends. Got invested. Where are you, by, where are you from? I'm from Taiwan. Way. I'm I'm like always in Taiwan. Um, okay. And I went to Germany for a year, but otherwise haven't uh, stayed for more than six months anywhere else. Um, so um, yeah, I'm in Taiwan and uh, part of the, the initial dot com uh, rush back in 1996, which is when I quit uh, junior high school. Um, also, I think that's because the, the, there's this Tim Berners-Lee who invented this World Wide Web thing. Uh, and uh, I found out everything that I can find online is 10 years ahead of what a textbook have to teach me. So um, I just told my principals, you know, I, I'm going to learn from the internet instead. So um, that's the quit base. Junior, you quit junior high school? Yeah, that's right. That's when I was 15. At what age? 15? Okay. Mm -hmm. And right. what did you do after that, after you finished school, after you quit school? Um, I, I co-founded a, a pretty large uh, internet company. Okay. Um, and um, sold off the stocks when I was... 18 or something, um, led the, the Perl community for a while. Um, the, the Perl is a computer language, one of the earlier scripting languages. Uh, and um, it was in a state of stagnation. And its creator, Larry Wall, decided to make a new version of Perl called Perl 6. And it was widely considered impossible to, to implement, to do. Uh, and I just came out of nowhere and, and implemented it. Uh, that was in 2005. Um, so between uh, 2000 and 2005, I'm mostly doing free software advocacy and free speech and uh, all sort of other activism things while running a, a social enterprise uh, called Our Internet. So that was all in Taiwan. Why is this, may yes. I ask, interrupt you for a second? Why is, yeah. uh, you haven't told me the motivation, why is free software and free speech important to you? Why, what, where did this come from? This right, because, because I was able to quit school uh, because of things like the Gutenberg project. It's like Wikipedia before Wikipedia, right? Uh, there's oh, yeah. people, yeah, there's people who digitize all those books. So um, I basically got all my education uh, from projects like Project Gutenberg. So uh, I would like to give back. That's my motivation because otherwise it, it wouldn't be possible. Um, and also, I think my outlook on history or human nature is um, very much biased to optimism because uh, Project Gutenberg only con uh, contains at the time works before the First World War because everything afterwards is still in copyright. So um, I read the classics before the World Wars. So I think that really biased my education. Um, Why does in, that lead you to optimism? Hmm? Because, well, before the First World War, most of the thinkers uh, in Europe at least uh, did not anticipate civilization would even go into a downward spiral. Keep going. Right. So um, I think the, the, the idea is um, when the Internet was first beginning also, um, nobody really thought, um, at least at that time, that it will be as cent uh, centralized, as domesticated uh, as today's Internet. Um, back 
at that day, um, I, I learned from the, uh, for example, the first Blue Ribbon campaign of the Electronic Frontier Foundation and uh, very early consensus making days. So before I got my voting right when I was um, 20, which is the age of consent in Taiwan, uh, I already experienced for five years a very different political model, which is what we call the rough consensus model, which is the model of how, um, well, Mozilla to this day, but still most of the early internet runs uh, from, which is this anarchist model of uh, rough consensus and running code. So I think that's my, my tribal culture. That's how I get a culture. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all really fascinating. You're a very interesting person, obviously. Um, but that needs to be coherent. Uh, so let's certainly can I hear that? Can, yeah, let's start like, let's do it simply like from a beginning, middle end point of view. Mm -hmm. Like here you are today, we I'm Audrey Tang, and I'm doing mm -hmm. this. Okay, mm -hmm. it's like we can come up with a much more interesting way of doing it. But can you please tell me how you got to where you are today? Obviously, the story is going to start at about age fifteen, maybe before. Well, yeah, sure. Um, uh, well, I'm Audrey Tang. I'm digital. Great, great. Can I ask uh -huh. you another favor. Do you have uh, your phone near you? Uh, you mean like an iPhone, like this one? Some sort of that. Yeah, why don't you put on the voice recorder so we capture what you say, if this is useful. If you're not, don't I'm, worry I'm, about I'm it. recording this entire Skype oh, okay. call. So, okay, yeah. Fantastic. Right. Okay, uh, okay. Well, but I, I wouldn't mind another recorder. Anyway, so, yeah. Uh, uh, don't uh, I'll re we all know what's good. <laughs> what's good with Dick? You know that, right? All right. So, what's um, good with in the mind? Anyway, um, I, I think what's the the... So how long do you think the, the intro paragraph needs oh, to be? Oh, I, I think this should go just for a minute or two. I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I don't want to take away from what you're doing, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, and we have to figure out the right place for all of this as well. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just in the beginning when you're talking to the, to the crowd, mm -hmm. really. Um, okay, sure. And I, you certainly don't need to introduce your name. Everybody knows who you are in terms mm -hmm. of that. I was there. So just start mm -hmm. somewhere. Interestingly, okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, all right. So. Um, or can I give you? You want me to give you a place to start? Sure. Uh, when I was when I was fifteen. Okay. When I was fifteen, uh, I dropped out of junior high school to pursue a education exclusively on this new, newly invented thing called the World Web. Um, I told my principal at the time that uh, everything that I can learn online is like 10 years in the future uh, compared to the textbooks, so she let me do that. Um, and I found that online everything is uh, voluntarily given. Um, there's a lot of free resources, and the best thing is that this whole online system, this thing we call internet, uh, there's a political system behind it. It's called this rough consensus model, where people follow these anarchistic principles of coming to consensus and implementing things just uh, without a central director or presidents or voting. So that's the first political system that I know, and it's the political system that I'm introducing now to Taiwan's national government. Um, whoa, we went from 15 to you're introducing something to the national government. Tell me, give me a little more, give me a little more story there, will you please? Okay. So the first political system you got it. Oh, by the way, your teacher just let you go. Oh yeah. Well, they, they actually faked my records to the, to the ministry of education. So I won't get fined by uh, skipping voluntary, uh, compulsory education. And what your parents think about this? Well, they were initially very skeptical because nobody really knew what a web is, right? But I managed to, to just reason it out uh, and convince them after a couple of months. What year was it when you were 15? Uh, 1996. So maybe that's a better place to start. In 1996, I was 15 and mm -hmm. I, decided, I decided I was leaving school. Okay. So I told, I told the principal. I mean, I think you need to give me a little more detail here. It's very interesting that the principal was actually on your side. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Well, certainly. Well, that's very, Audrey, that's mm -hmm. very unusual. Okay. In a public, is it a public school or private school? Were you a it's a public talk? school. It's a public In school. In a public school. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a very unusual thing. Let's, mm -hmm. not, let's not forget the fact of drama. Drama is mm -hmm. very compelling mm -hmm. to an audience who's listening to a million speakers a day, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So 
So give me the drama of your story. Come on. There you are. You're dropping out of school at 15. Okay. They're letting you go. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Right. So what happens? So there you go. You get introduced to this thing called rough consensus. So what ha what happens next? So you're 16. I don't want every year, but you know, let's get let's get to some of the 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 high points that you told me about. You co-founded a company. Well, yeah. Uh, well, actually, 1996, when I come to think about it, is also the the year that we in Taiwan, uh, after 30 years of military dictatorship, finally have our first presidential election. Uh, uh, <clears throat> hey, that's good. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Right. So it's like, <clears throat> you know, internet and democracy uh, is not uh, two things. It's the same thing in Taiwan. They happened literally the same year. Um, the, the year <clears throat> we have World Web, we also have our first presidential election. Um, and I think that's why there's a very strong free software community in Taiwan, because um, we know that free software, the free doesn't stand for free of cost. We know that its freedom is never free of cost, freedom of assembly, of speech. Our parents and grandparents' generation fought dearly for it. Um, so that's another arc that we can use. Um, I love that. No, I, great. That's, that's a great observation. All right. So uh, now, now... Where am I? So um, when I was, well, I don't really know how, how much detail do I need to tell between, like when I can tell that, you know, when I was 20, I started uh, devoting full time to the open source movement, to the free software movement, because I want to give back um, to the community that uh, taught me, right? Uh, so um, I, I helped on um, this very new project called Wikipedia, on Freenet, on all those Slashdot, all those uh, early community uh, websites. And I think the, the main idea is just to create a safe space in which we can all learn from some, from each other. And even if the experiments fail, we can always go back here. So it's like solidarity. Um, I think the, uh, the other interesting part is uh, in 2001, when I first got the right to vote, um, I went back to the district for a head of district level voting. Uh, and um, it, it I wasn't living um, in my district at the time, and I had to travel for a couple of hours to go back to vote. And um, well, the candidate I voted for ended up winning by one vote, and they did a recount, and they he still won by one vote. And I think that that's really um, indoctrinated me that uh, in in the sense that participation and like every vote counts literally, and um, that uh, the public sphere is, is there for everybody to participate. Um, by the way, I also, my, my dad was also the spokesperson of one of the uh, presidential candidates back in 1996. So we also did a lot of internet campaigning. I don't know if that counts. So um, I think there's all this idea of uh, internet participation, uh, democracy thing that's co-evolving in a sense in my life. Are you, are, so you said you're an optimist, right? Yep. I think that's also a very nice place to begin, um, mm -hmm. because not many people are today, especially oh, yeah. in the West, as you know, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that might be the most interesting place to begin, because all of this is making me feel very optimistic. I mean, I think there's too much detail in what you're saying. Sure. Uh -huh. No problem. Easy mm -hmm. to cut out, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're a, you're a rare bird in that way, in that you actually think that there's, this is an optimistic future. You know, greetings from the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only is it eight hours ahead, but you know, I'm an optimist about where we're heading. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me tell you why. Okay? Mm, well, that's me, a great opening. Yeah, I mean, that's mm -hmm. sort of the framework, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. Basically, yep. I think you're you're getting a little caught in the details as you go through this, which is fine. You have mm -hmm. to unearth it. Mm -hmm. You need think it's important to tell me, and you tell me that you started this very large internet company. Is it important? Um. No, uh, it was important back in the late nineties. Okay, and today, just bring me back today. What do you? What do you? You do three things. What are they? Break it down for me and explain it to me slowly, please. What do I do? Well, there's three things you said you did, um, uh, and all of them have left my mind, and I didn't write them down, so I can't. Right. I can't so read. right. So there's three stories in my presentation. I, I think it helps if I actually show my presentation. Just a second. Um, it's somewhere. Um, it's here. Right. So, 
Yes.、Um, the first story is about how we occupied、um, the Taiwan Parliament for twenty-two days. Who is we?、Um, the occupiers, a bunch of students. This is back to occupy time. Okay, very good. Right. Okay. This is twenty fourteen.、Um, I, I had no idea there was an occupy movement in Taiwan.、Mm -hmm. um, I live in New York. Obviously, I'm New York centric. Um, I'm not sure if anybody in the audience knows this either. You know, the mainstream media、mm -hmm. does not cover Asia very effectively, as you well know. Right. Sure. Yes.、Um, so you may have to just sort of walk me through a little bit, but continue, please. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. So back in were you, were you, back were you a in, beginner, were you a starter of the Occupy movement in Taiwan, for example? Well, I'm the I'm the first person to offer the students who、um, run to this parliament、uh, internet support. So I think I'm, I'm one of the first civic tech uh, supporters. Uh, we're、oh. seen as neutrals、uh, in that game. We provide equal internet access to the medics, to the lawyers, to the protesters on both sides.、Uh, I think we can take some credit for having this to be the occupy that's completely peaceful. Nobody went dead or missing. And the occupiers actually got a consensus、uh, from half a million people on the street, and actually the head of parliament consented、uh, to that consensus, and so it was a victorious <laughs> occupy. Um, tell me what you did. You occupied the parliament for how long? For twenty-two days. Where you sat in the lobby, you sat in the chambers. What, yeah, everywhere, everywhere. Well, so tell me, tell me the story, right?、Please. So, so back in the time, it was called the Sunflower Movement.、Uh, the MPs at the time refused to deliberate a trade service agreement with Beijing, because they think constitutionally Beijing is part of Taiwan, is a domestic agreement, so it doesn't need parliamentary debate or something like that.、Um, in any case, it's as if the MPs went on strike. So the occupiers, far from just protesting,、uh, did a demonstration in a demo scene sense, meaning that we took the parliament. But not instead of、uh, protesting, we deliberated the trade service agreement with half a million people on the street and showed that how is it possible、uh, to do efficient deliberations even with this much people, and this is facilitated by professional facilitators and co、um, co organized by twenty NGOs, the Greens, the Labors,、uh, the Separatists, all the peoples, and were supported by the Gov Zero Civic Tech Community, which I belong to, and this is community. Is very interesting because our call to action is to fork the government, and by forking the government, it means that we look at all the government websites that we don't like, which all ends in gov.tw, and build shadow websites that ends in g0v.tw. So we solve the discoverability problem. You just look at the government website, change an O to a zero, and get to the shadow government, which open data and everything. This is all presumably a part of your presentation, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to step. I don't want to hear the presentation because I'm sure it's great,、mm -hmm. but I want、like、to hear the story. I'm still trying to finish who you are. Okay. okay. So、right. there are three there are, there are three things you currently do in your life or in your job or in your work. One is this Occupy movement. What else do you do you currently do? Well, well, that's. That's not how I phrased it. I said there's three stories that I that I have in this presentation. Occupy is something that already happened, right? So my yeah, my my full time job is just Taiwan's digital minister, member of the cabinet, and all that.、Uh, sure. And、uh, my main work、um, is to lower the fear, uncertainty, and doubt of the public service. On concepts such as civic participation, open government, radical transparency, and all that. So the idea、uh, is, is mainstreaming participation. Okay, very good. So really, you 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 identify first as Taiwan's digital for this crowd, Taiwan's digital minister, and what that entails. Is that correct? That's correct. Perfect. That that's what I wanted to. That's what I wanted to know. The presentation will go into the details of all this,、mm -hmm. but I, I'm I'm trying to just get to you to you know. Here I am. I dropped out of school at fifteen. I did this. I did that. I did this. Today I'm Taiwan's digital minister. The first are you the first digital minister of Taiwan? That's right, presumably. And and you are responsible. And that job is, is responsible for this, this, and this, right? Right. So,、uh, yeah, I'm responsible for pushing Taiwan's open government agenda for social enterprise and for youth affairs. Although the last two probably doesn't enter the presentation. Yeah. 
food. And how is this a radical position in Taiwan? Give me a little, I need a little context here. You're, you're, you're saying all this very matter of factly mm -hmm. as if I know a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. as if the audience knows a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I think you need to provide a little bit of context or else it's going to just sound quite factual. Right. So, um, well, yes and no. Taiwan didn't have a digital minister, but there is a tradition of having people who worked in international companies to work in the cabinet. My predecessor uh, was from IBM Asia. Uh, her predecessor was from Google. So, um, and I worked with Apple for six years. So, so it's kind of a tradition. It's not very out of ordinary here. Okay. Right. Good. Uh, um, so, what else? Um, as Thomas Digital Minister, well, but I, I can say that, well, I'm the first one that introduced this uh, idea of radical transparency or rough consensus or all these things that the crowd identifies with because the previous ministers, they um, come from a very, mm, what would we say, establishment um, yep. class uh, and uh, doesn't actually put, um, you know, radical transparency as their top agenda while I am. So, for example, um, I publish uh, publicly um, all the meetings that I hold, even internal meetings, uh, all the meetings with journalists and everything. Um, and so this is actually very radical because um, nobody, to my knowledge, in any national movement ever did that. So everyone knows that uh, after a meeting with Audrey, um, Audrey will send, the digital minister will send a Etherpad link to all the participants and they can all edit for 10 days uh, to take out the words that may sound too bad uh, when it comes to press or whatever. But after the 10 days or 10 working days editing, um, it's all published verbatim online. So there's millions of words um, of hundreds of meetings uh, that I've convened uh, after entering the parliament uh, the cabinet a year ago. Fantastic. What's the effect of that? So um, the effect is to vote. First, uh, it made uh, somewhat surprisingly, the public servants very much willing to innovate because the career public servants um, have this dilemma. If they do something right, it's always the minister's credit. If, if they do something wrong, the press has a way to find who actually did the wrong thing and put the blame on the career public servants. But uh, publishing this transcript reversed, flipped this situation because, yeah, because... Yeah, because this digital ministry is blame-seeking and credit-avoiding. If everything goes right, uh, people just check the original transcript and discover who is the anon previously anonymous career public servant who came up with this great idea. So they get the credit. And if uh, this you know, innovative uh, problem goes wrong, because nobody did policymaking this way anyway, Audrey gets all the blame. So under this situation, uh, people are much more innovative than they previously was because, you know, I, I'm not claiming the credit and I don't uh, issue commands. Instead, they just brainstorm. So that's really, so this is another reason you're an optimist, obviously. Mm -hmm. You can actually, and, and, I, and it seems like you're actually getting career bureaucrats on your side at the that's same right. time. They're not, yes. they're not afraid of this, which is really interesting, right? Yes. You would think, you would think most of them would be very afraid. So is this a part of the, the thing you're going to be showing? Yes. So th this is the slide actually where I'm showing what, this what, thing. So I want to be sure that you talk – not only did you do it, mm -hmm. but what was the result of it? Yes. Okay. The mm -hmm. result is what's really interesting. Mm -hmm. The doing is fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean you're obviously very smart and interesting. You're rocking by the way. You're mm -hmm. rocking back and forth. I don't mm -hmm. want you rocking when you're doing your presentation. Okay. Uh, sure. Of course. But just out, just mentioning that. Yeah. Um, you want a swivel chair or on a rocking chair or in a straight chair? Um, to be perfectly transparent, I'm on my bed, uh, and okay. I, the rocking was just me adjusting the position of the pillows totally. and everything. I didn't realize you were on your bed. That explains rocking. No problem. Okay. Me, okay. But what's really important here is the result of this action. Mm -hmm. I mean, equally the result of the Occupy mm -hmm. action, right? Is that you actually want, went out and. And, you know, got yeah, and got a demands met. Yes. Yeah, that you actually brought democracy to the street. Who knew if the, I don't know if the people understood what was going on or not, but mm -hmm. you actually enabled them to understand it and bring it to them. That's right. So please always, you know, give me the upshot of this stuff, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me some more, please. All right. <clears throat> so um, 
Yeah. So, for example, the the Occupy, the、uh, idea was that the parliament needs to really treat Beijing as just another、um, diplomatic entity and pass treaties the same way as we pass treaty to, for example, New Zealand.、Um, and and that demand got met. Uh, and so the students retreated peacefully.、Um, this radical transparency, designed to promote innovation in the bureaucracy,、uh, actually worked, and it also kept lobbying、um, to a minimum.、Uh, it's not that I don't meet with lobbyists. For example, this is David Plouf from Uber. Is that all the lobbyists is actually adding to something because they know that everything is under. 360 record, and、uh, so they behave much more civilized, and、uh, actually was able to bring several different disagreeing sides, such as Uber and taxis,、um, to a rough consensus, to a agreement because of this style of working.、Um, and this slide is where I appeal to the free software folks、um, in the in the audience, saying that、um, I was the first thing that I did. As digital minister is to recompile the Linux kernel, which is operating system,、uh, to run all those softwares that people love in the free software um, um, world. And the end result、uh, is that because it runs on this what we call the Sandstorm platform, which is now、uh, certified by our Department of Cybersecurity,、um, people can very easily add their free software contributions to be、um, part of the Taiwan Public Service or well anywhere's public service really, and not worry about its security implications because the security is handled by the Sandstorm security hardened platform. So this is the the software、uh, slide. That I'm going to talk about. Yeah. So,、um, and the、uh, and this slide is about how we enlisted、um, all the different ministries,、uh, all 32 of them, to send us one、um, career public servant as participation officer. And the end result is that、uh, for all the e-petitions, for all people's petitions above,、uh, say, five thousand. Uh, counter signatures. It's like in in U.S. you have、uh, we the people, right?、Uh, but、uh, after meeting the petition threshold, instead of just a written response from a random minister,、uh, the petitioners、uh, and counter signature people, like six of them, is actually invited to the national government to have a face to face、um, deliberation with、um, people from all the relevant ministries. And the end result is I, that I want you, yes. Can you try this again for me, please? Do it this way. Yes. Before、mm-hmm. there was this program, this、mm-hmm. is how it worked. Okay. But when we tried the, pro- I need the before and after so I can understand it better.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, you know the the intricacies of the Taiwanese government aren't、right. they're well known, neither or not not necessarily that interesting. What's interesting、mm-hmm. is how you formed it. So、mm-hmm. give me the before and the after. Okay. Right. Let me hear. So、um, yeah. So before I entered the cabinet, we had a. E-petition platform,、um, just like We the People in the U.S.,、uh, but it was not very popular. It was again like、uh, also like a, what We the People have been described like a ghost town, and the reason is that people often get a very formal, very bureaucratic written response from one of the ministries, while what they're、right. actually petitioning. Yes,、uh, what they're petitioning is actually very reasonable. It's just because it touches multiple different ministries, so they don't get a satisfactory、uh, response from the one ministry that was designated to handle it. So to solve this issue,、uh, when I become digital minister, I、uh, invited at least one senior bureaucrat from、uh, every single every ministry in Taiwan、uh, to form a virtual team called the participation officers, and we're on the same Slack channel. We use all the same internet tools. We basically acculturate them into the internet culture of rapid responses and、uh, not afraid of facing people. So now,、uh, the after a petition is signed, the POs, the participation officers, actually vote on things that they want to. Collaborate on, and then invite the petitioners on a face-to-face deliberation, and we're able to solve some very difficult、um, issues, such as、um, how many holidays、um, to have in Taiwan、uh, between the labor camps and <laughs> and、uh, and the capitalists,、uh, and、uh, for example, how to balance environmental issues of overfishing、uh, versus the livelihood of local fishers, and things like that,、uh, and the lemon cars, and everything you can think of,、uh, using this way of collaboration. To everybody's satisfaction. So say a little less. Okay. Okay. 
try that again and give it to me in about, that was probably about three minutes. I wasn't right. timing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see if you can condense quickly as you're walking through this. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me see if I can guide you a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's how it worked before. Mm -hmm. When I came in, I saw this problem and I did this. Mm -hmm. And here's how, here's how it's working today. It's not perfect, but mm -hmm. it's done. This, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to over-explain it. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you. So, um, before I entered the cabinet, there was this e-petition platform in Taiwan. Uh, it's called a ghost town, and for a very good reason. Because people went, finally get 5,000 people countersigning it, but get a very bureaucratic response of very little actual substantial content. And now, um, after I become digital minister, it's much better. Uh, it's not perfect, but because we have one person from each ministry forming a virtual team of uh, rapid response participation officers, we actually invite the people who enter the petition to meet with all the national ministries' people face-to-face -face and resolve some very difficult problems, such as uh, environmental issues, such as uh, uh, what holidays, how many holidays to have in a year, and so on to everybody's satisfaction. Did that feel better to you? Slightly lukewarm. Why? What was the matter? Um, I think if I use the same formula for one, two, three, four, for all the four things that I do as a digital ministry, it might be a little bit repetitive. P possibly. Yeah. Yes, possibly. And I don't want you to use the same format. Ah, okay. I, I wanted to give you the sense of the the the, the storytelling arc of before. Here's mm -hmm. what we did. Here was the result. Okay. Well, I, think that's if, good. I do think if you use it four times, it's going to get repetitive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, but for this one, yes, I'm feeling better. Okay, good. Give me another one. Okay. You mean, but that's the end of my four slides. So, do you want me you to. Mean? So, as a digital minister, I only have four slides talking about my work as digital oh, minister. Sure. Yeah. sure. So, the, let me see the first one. This the, is who I am. This is who I am. This is the this is the radical transparency thing. Fantastic. The third one is the, the third one is the participation. Oh, this is the free right. software. Then, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. and then this is the participation offices. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, um yeah, I just want to give you that that, that that's a very simple storytelling trope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The before, the action, the result. And the result, by the way. It doesn't always have to be positive. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting when it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a rub, or maybe you do a tweak, or maybe something else is happening. Mm -hmm. And this is not perfect. This is, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do me a favor. Let's work on a little vocal modulation. Yes. As well, and then we'll put this together. Okay. We'll we'll start putting some of this stuff together. But let's talk. Will you bring up that sheet on vo on? Um, on vocal modulation. Do you have it handy? Yeah, of course. Just a second. The most fast speaking training tips. Uh, eliminate verbal mush? Or, I think it's uh, called vocal modulation. Uh, I don't think I have one called vocal modulation. What do you have? Uh, you have a zip with eliminate verbal mush, essential questions, leading a panel, question to ask yourself, slow it down, start strong, TED Talks worth watching, telling memorable stories, and 10 elements. Oh, interesting. I forgot to give you that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know why. Because vocal modulation is very hard to do on your own. Okay. Okay, let me find it, okay? Yes, I made a decision to not do that one. Mm hmm Here we go. How, can I share this on Skype? Sure, or, or email, whatever. I'll email it to you, probably. But show me how to share it on Skype. Where do I go? Um, you just drop it on my face. Oh, I just drop it into your thing, right, exactly. 
onto your face. Well, if it doesn't work, there's a conversation, a balloon, text balloon button uh, on top of the overlay. Uh, and if you click it, that's where you can drop it also. Oh, this is assuming you're on Mac. I really don't. Oh, here you go. You got it. And you can, you can have it all emailed to you as well if it doesn't. Uh, you can download it from there. Sure. I want you to do it with me. Let me know when it's open, okay? Mm, it's still on the wire. I, I don't see any files for you at the moment. Okay, I'm going to email it to you. Mm -hmm. Do it the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Get it? It's taking its time. It's a very simple document. <laughs> I know. Not, it's not a file, believe me. I'm checking the, the spam folder just in case. Um, hmm. So, just a second. How about the Skype? Did the Skype one open yet? Did it download? The sky, I, I, I see you typing, uh, and then it doesn't really go through. Oh, the, with, the shot, the thing didn't go in? No, not at all. Maybe you would like to try it. Oh, here it just goes. Did it, just did it again. Oh, yay, yay, technology. All right, here we go. How about uh, that, huh? Yeah. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. This is very, very simple, okay? Mm -hmm. There's five or six sentences here. One mm. word is boldface. Read mm. each one and emphasize it with either loudness or strength of voice the word that is in boldface, okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so do I just start? Yes, okay. please. Mary had a little lamp. Okay. Do the Ma next one, please. Mary had a little lamp. Do the third one, please. Mary had a little lamp. Do the fourth one. Mary had a little lamp. And now do the last one. Mary had a little lamp. I'm going to do them as well, and then you're going to read the part back to me on the right-hand side, okay? Okay. Mary had a little lamp. Mary, not Tom, had a lamp. Do you hear, the, do you hear that, by yes. the way? I, yes. I need, to, I need to clock with you, okay? Mary had a little lamp. She had it once, but she does not have it now. A past tense. Mary had a little lamp. She had one, not two, and not the lamp. Mary had a little lamp. The lamp was little, not huge. Mary had a little lamb. A lamb, not a sheep. Exactly. Okay. So were you able to hear the difference in the mm -hmm. sentences when I did that? Okay. Yes. Excellent. This is something you could use to your benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because your speech is very, I mean, your English is fantastic, you're a great English speaker, but you, you tend to use a monotone mm -hmm. when you speak, okay? If you want to engage the audience a little more and mm -hmm. draw them in, you, can, you have the choice to emphasize different words, mm -hmm. okay? So from now on, I don't care what word you emphasize, mm -hmm. but let's use, let's use the next six sentences, okay? I want you to pick a word, you emphasize it, mm -hmm. and I also want you to add a little microsecond of a pause after that word, okay? Okay. Try it. This was their finest hour. Exactly. Now, by the way, I want you to try it again, but pick the least important word that you think in that. We all tend to pick the word that we think is important. Mm -hmm. Now pick a word that you think is not important. Just okay. go. 
This was their finest hour. Exactly. So every word is important. If、mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying, okay.、Mm-hmm. Every word, depending on the meaning you want,、mm-hmm. can be emphasized to a different effect.、Mm-hmm. Let's do the next one. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free. So was it may? Yeah. It was a little half-hearted may. Could you do it with a little more conviction, please? Okay. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may or may not be free. Okay. Do the next one, please. This is a very American English sentence. Oh yeah. Terrible. Terrible. I was just wondering what you'd like to maybe come in today. <laughs> That didn't sound quite right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. I think you meant that as a question. Like that's if that's the word you're going to use. Yeah. I was wondering if you'd like to maybe come in today. Sometimes you know it's not only doing it loud.、Uh-huh. You can also do it soft. You can、okay. do other things with that incredible instrument. That is your voice, but that's a terrible sentence. Let's use the next one, okay? Okay. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. Exactly. Now that's really a difference for you, okay?、Mm-hmm. When you emphasize words like that, does it sound very unnatural to you? Well, I've I've never spoken English like this, so、yeah. English is、yeah. like my fifth language. So yeah,、well, but, but it's really really、uh, a difference.、Uh, yes. So it, can you hear the difference? Yes. Okay. Good. That's all I want to know is if you can hear and feel the difference. By the way. Okay. When you're talking on a screen, also, I can't、mm-hmm. see myself. Can you see me full full screen? Oh yeah, I can see you full screen. Yes. If it's a little lamb, you can use your hands really effectively. Like who is a little lamb? Show、mm-hmm. me a little lamb. Show me little. A little. Show me little. 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 Like this little. Show me less, even、Tiny. smaller. Show me really little,、yeah. exact, like nanometer. Yeah, yeah, show me big. It's hard to do big on a small screen. Yeah, big. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 So when you do that,、uh-huh. you become much more alive.、Uh-huh. I don't. You can't see, but I'm doing it for you now. Yeah. Okay.、Uh-huh. Right. It's much more compelling than、uh-huh. just here's my face on a screen. Right. <laughs> Because this way, I just look like one of those bureaucrats,、mm-hmm. right? But、mm-hmm. you have this voice and you have this body,、mm-hmm. and I—you're、so、very limited by you know you have this much space, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And use your body,、mm-hmm. do it. So do the last sentence, the very last one. Okay. Oh, okay.、Um, we must do this now. Exactly.、Uh-huh. Now do it really different. Now I want you to try something else.、Mm-hmm. Punctuate.、Mm-hmm. We must do this now. Okay. That staccato. Let me hear you. We must do this now. Exactly. I、mm-hmm. like the way you did it first.、Mm-hmm. Much more, by the way. It was、mm-hmm. much more you.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So the point of this is just to get natural.、Mm-hmm. Okay. This is not going to happen in a minute. It's not、mm-hmm. going to happen in a week. It may not happen by Mozfest, okay?、Mm-hmm. But it's something you can think about when you're presenting all、mm-hmm. the time, okay?、Mm-hmm. And you can play with this.、Mm-hmm. This is like, I mean, the content of your cake is there.、Mm-hmm. This is the icing that really draws the listener in to pay attention.、Mm-hmm. And because you're on a screen, it's、mm-hmm. more challenging,、mm-hmm. right? It's just harder. So let's play a little with tone in English. Okay. okay. The next part. Now we're going to pick two words. I just、mm-hmm. picked cheese sandwich. Okay. okay. A ham sandwich. You can make it a pork bun. I don't care. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay. okay? I only want you to use those two words, and I'm going to call out an emotion, and、mm-hmm. I want you to, to convey that emotion.、Mm-hmm. Okay. This could be. This is not what you do naturally in English. Okay,、mm-hmm. so I'm going to ask you to really convey emotion through the words, just through the tone of your voice.、Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just use your words. It's fine. So cheese, cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwich. Is it anger? Cheese sandwich. Anger, more angry. Cheese sandwich. Thank you. Happy. Cheese sandwich. Happier. 
Cheese sandwich. Cute. Sad. Can you be sad with cheese sandwich? <laughs> cheese sandwich. <laughs> okay. You don't have to cry. <laughs> cheese sandwich. The cheese sandwich uh, me. How about important? Important. Yeah. Cheese sandwich. Mm, more emphatic, please. Cheese sandwich. There you go. One more time. Cheese sandwich. Exactly. So, before, when ministers would lobby, they would just send back a pro forma response that was so boring no one could even read it. Now that they're participation officers, they see that their words actually have meaning, that they're no longer... It's no longer a culture of blame, but a culture of, I can't remember what you said. But it's okay, collaboration, but anyway. Right, Mm -hmm. and it actually matters, it actually matters to them now, and they find that their engagement, they're more popular, they're more alive in their job. They're rock stars. (laughs) Well, you know, for a bureaucrat, Mm -hmm. maybe getting somebody to read their fucking, you know, boring transcript Mm -hmm. is like a rock star, right? It's true, it's true, yes. So, so give me a quick use some use some vocal modulation, mm-hmm. convey some tone, mm-hmm. and tell me in a sentence or two what they did before mm-hmm. and what's happening now. Okay, mm-hmm. let me hear. Let me hear. Before, when people send in those e petitions, they get this very blunt, like nothing really matters uh, response from the bureaucrats. But now, with the participation offices all collaborating across ministries, they become alive. All the responses are not just text, they're personal. They were invited to Taipei, or we fly to those rural islands and meet with those 5,000 people face-to-face on live stream. So, how unnatural does that feel to you? Like maximally? <laughs> Like, I've never spoken like this before. (laughs) (laughs) I could tell. And did it feel convincing? No, not at all. Well, you're wrong. Okay, did it? Yes, it's much more... It's more pleasurable to listen to when you're going up and... Look, watch my hand. When you're going Mm -hmm. up and down, Mm -hmm. when you're fluctuating in your Mm -hmm. voice... Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like you were overdoing it, Mm -hmm. which is fun. That's mm-hmm. where I want you to begin, okay? Mm-hmm. Overdoing is a very good place to start. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, when you write something, your draft is this long, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's this long, right? Yes. So, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to overemphasize as we continue, okay? okay? Just go crazy with it. I'll tell you when it's wrong okay, or when it's really good. Like, I have to tell you, I thought that was very good. Okay. I, it, me being able to listen attentively, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm only, here's how I'm working. I have my finger on my pulse, okay? Okay. As long as you get my blood going, I'm with you. Ah, okay. Okay? That's great. That's what I'm going to do is engage me all Mm -hmm. the time, okay? Okay. Awesome. By the way, I think when you begin your presentation, it would be a good idea to introduce, I don't know if you do this in the beginning, the comments... I think you should invite the participation very early. Do you do that? Yes, that's my first slide, actually. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. very good. Okay, very good. So I think that let's just use the tone and the emotion mm-hmm. and the word emphasis going forward, okay? Okay. Very good. So do you want to walk me through your the, the presentation now, the deck you're going to use? Do you want to do that? Okay, sure. Uh, well, it's a 10-minute presentation anyway, so we can do it in 10 minutes. Do it. Well, I'd like to do it a couple of times. Okay. I'd like to start it off with, you know, in, in, in 1995 or when I was 16, just mm-hmm. start right there, or I'm an optimist. Okay. This is not, you know, whatever it is that you want to start with, let's just pick a place, okay? All right, all right. I sort of um, think the optimist is your theme. Mm-hmm. Yes. And... The, and that's a good theme, by the way. And it's mm-hmm. something you can come back to. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say it a hundred times, but it's certainly a way to wrap. Also gives you a good conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I believe, from what I've seen and heard from you in one hour only, mm-hmm. that, that it really is the underlying story here. Mm-hmm. Am I correct? 
Am that's I correct, correct or not? No, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So let's start there, okay? Let's see how that works, if it works. Um, the way I, you know, look, here's what I, I, I never told you anything about me, but I'm going to give you a bunch of tools, mm -hmm. as I already have, mm -hmm. and you're going to take the ones that work for you, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, they're super helpful, by the way, yeah. The, the ones that I did receive. I'm really happy to know that you read yeah. them. I, I had no idea mm -hmm. if anybody was going to read them or not. But, oh, okay. But, they're, but they really work best when it's one-to-one. -one. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to read something and get good at it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, is there anything else, before we kick into this, was there anything else that stood out? Was it speaking more slowly or... Or was there anything else that you thought, okay, I'd like to work on with this guy? Well, um, the verbal mush thing, um, I actually look at my transcript and s saw a lot of actually, because that's a, a <laughs> verbatim transcript from my recording, right? So the stenographers type what they heard, but I, I took them all out. Uh, and I think it's really helpful. Um, I had maybe like seven actuallys. Um, so that's, that's the thing. Uh, and I think the... The slow speaking also really helps. It's it's um, in Taiwan for a political uh, minister in the cabinet. Um, we're trained to do the opposite. We saw the verbal acting thing is what the MPs do, right? There's a very clear. Uh, if you you see a parliamentary inquiry, you see one side using all their vocal modulation and the other side being completely plain. And I'm on the completely plain side. Well, let's yeah. fuck with that. Start yeah, so today. so let's fuck with that. Yes, let's just fuck with that, Miss Radical Transparency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. So listen, don't worry about the filler words. Actually, I'm very sensitive to filler words. You actually, you don't use actually that much. Actually. Okay. okay? That's great. Actually, you use it a little bit actually, but not mm. so much. All okay. right. Okay. I, I. And if you're going to slow, here's how what I want you to do. Okay. Slowing down is very hard to do. We mm -hmm. all revert to our natural pace. That's mm -hmm. just the okay. The way to do it, I think, is a little more efficient. Is at the end of a powerful sentence or at the end of a paragraph of thinking, pause for a second. Just pause. Give it some silence. Okay. It gives the audience some time to catch up. Mm -hmm. Okay. It breaks your flow a little bit. It makes people think you're really thinking about something smart. Mm. Okay? Okay. So you can use pausing as a way of slowing down. And I think you'll actually will slow down actually a little more actually just by adding that actual pause. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can you try it with me now? Just read something in front of you. I don't care what it is. Put a pause in after a sentence or two. Let me see if I can hear it. Okay. Um... Just read anything. I don't care what it is. Take an emotional state and build a whole conversation around the phrase cheese sandwich. Imagine you've just seen the most exciting thing. You want to share that experience with a friend, but you can only use the words cheese sandwich to convey your feelings and no others. Try consoling using a cheese sandwich or congratulating Experiment with as many different ways as you can. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, you're, again, you're probably 30% too much. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. But that's really good. You're really doing it. Okay. Thank you. I love your participation. You're really going for it. We will hone this in the next hour, okay? Okay. We will absolutely get it to a place where... It still may feel unnatural, but mm -hmm. it will sound, I think you'll understand the effect of it. Okay? okay. That's great. Okay. So start, please, with the optimist. Give me a maybe a two-minute introduction. I'm going to clock it. And if it's going too long or if you feel like it's going too long, just stop. Okay. And mm -hmm. we'll start again. We'll get it. We'll get it. We want it to go fast. Maybe, maybe a minute and a half at the most. Okay. How okay. does that sound? That sounds All great. Right? All right, Audrey, give it a go. Let's see what... Let me, can I look at you full-time, please? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Of course. I want to watch you here. Okay. Because okay. this is the moment when people get to see you, right? This is mm -hmm. You're actually live with mm -hmm. them at this moment, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Okay. So, um... Full, I want you full screen, please. Okay. Uh, I'm closing... Okay. I, I got you. Okay. I got you. Yeah, okay. Well... Okay, begin. 
Greetings from the future.、Uh, I'm literally from the future. I'm now eight hours in the future. In Taiwan,、um, no, that's that's not a very good start. Let's start again. Okay.、Um, okay. You know what? Don't、mm. start there. Yeah. Start with this idea of optimism. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Start, 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 try it. Okay. Let's、mm-hmm. we'll see if it works. We'll know if it works right away.、Mm-hmm. You knew that worked. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Let's do another. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> well, let's combine those.、Um, hello,、um, I, hi everyone. I'm from the future.、Um, in Taiwan, we're literally eight hours in the future, but we're also experimenting with a future form of democracy. And let me tell you, I'm pretty optimistic about it. It's working pretty well. So, how about this? Or do I? Do I well, just? I think- If、Focus、I were you, I, I like. I think the future is fine. <clears throat> Greetings,、mm-hmm. the future. I'm eight hours ahead. It's already tomorrow.、Um, and in Taiwan, we're doing the future of democracy.、Um, and you know, unlike most people in the world that I know right now, I'm incredibly optimistic.、Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Go for it.、It's mm-hmm. Yours. Okay.、Um... Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm in Taiwan now. We're eight hours, literally, in the future, and okay, we're. You, let, me do, let me do something else. Okay. Stop the future. Forget the. Yes.、Future. Yes. Okay. Let's skip it. I'm erasing it now. Let me hear. Start with optimism. Okay. Okay. Let's just hear. I just want to hear how it sounds. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Start again. Go on. I'm an optimist. I've always been an optimist ever since I dropped out of junior high school when I was fifteen. That was 1996. We just had our first presidential election. In Taiwan, we had we suffered for 30 years of martial rule, of martial law, of dictatorship, but democracy was at hand, and with democracy also this fine thing called the World Wide Web. I was able to finish my education pretty much on my own, but not really on my own, but with a loving community of free software hackers, and that shaped my education. And that's how I become a opt- optimist. Because you see, in the early internet, people had this crazy idea of running the internet as an anarchistic political system, where nobody gets to command anyone to do anything. And all the internet protocols, everything that you can see today, was invented by those free, willing people who doesn't get to vote or command on each other. Does that work? Well, what do you think? Well, I think it's pretty convincing to me, but not. Maybe not to half of the audience. I thought it was a much better start. First of all, it felt much more honest, okay,、um, and much more real, and actually much more serious. Okay, okay. I mean, I, it, I, I don't, again, I don't think talking about time or the weather is a terribly interesting place. Okay, to start. that's great. That's great. Okay, that's me. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. It's not necessarily what you should. No, it's do, good.、Okay? It's good. What else could I improve? I think. I think it's like,、um, you know.、Um, Unlike many people in the world, I'm an optimist. Okay, and this is a strange thing to be right now, but with me, it started in 1995. Okay, that year I dropped out of school. I was 15 at the time.、Mm-hmm. My teacher even agreed that it was a good idea that I drop out of school because I said that I wanted to learn on the web. I、mm-hmm. wanted to use this new thing called the World Wide Web. Because a lot about it appealed to me. It was anarchistic. It was rebellious. No one was in control.、Mm-hmm. And I, and for some reason, whatever it was, you wanted to do this. You have to tell me why. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Today, I'm the the、uh, digital minister of Taiwan,、mm-hmm. the first digital minister,、mm-hmm. and I'm still trying to bring some of these radical ideas that I learned in 1995、mm-hmm. to my to my work. Okay.、Mm-hmm. They include. Radical transparency, blah 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 blah, and blah、mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Okay,、mm-hmm. I'm an optimist because right now it seems to be working.、Mm-hmm. How does that sound? Something like that. Listen, that's all. I just made that up based on、mm-hmm. what you told me.、Mm-hmm. How, how did that sound to you? It's fine、uh, up to the the last sentence. Uh, right now, it seems to be working. Seems to be lukewarm.、Uh, I would either be more cautious or even more energetic, but not like、you. in the mid what, middle. What did you say? Tell me. So,、uh, 
Um, today, uh, I'm Taiwan's first digital minister. I'm putting into the practice the same ideas that I was taught in 1996 by the internet community. And so far, it's transformed our society. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to tell you have to tell me what's true, okay? Mm -hmm. I, and I love that because it's you've not taken the credit for it, right? Like mm -hmm. I always think the speaker should be as humble as possible. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And that instead of saying it's working great and all my ideas are fantastic, you said mm -hmm. instead it's transforming the society. Yeah. That's perfect. Mhm. Mm Right? And doesn't that give you a good bridge? Am I now engaged? I want to hear, like, oh my God, how's that happening? Mm -hmm. Right, but uh, that creates an additional problem. Because now, uh, do I just go into the story or do I say, but by the way, if you want to ask me questions, you go to this website. Yeah, before I get into the story, mm -hmm. I want to invite your participation, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, in the idea of radical transparency, feeling, you know, or going with the idea of radical transparency, I want you to ask me anything you want. I'm mm -hmm. going to as we go through, okay? Mm -hmm. On this site is a here's the format. You just mm -hmm. plug it in, I'll mm -hmm. come back to it when I'm done. Mm -hmm. If it's really important, scream. Are you going to be able to see the questions as they roll in or Yeah, 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 in real time. I mean, are you able to really do you want to stop when these are coming in or do you want to pick them up at the end? What's more comfortable for you? Well, um so far because um people take time to type in those questions. So, um I found that it's easiest if I just record the whole 10 minute thing and re uh, and answer on the second part. But if there's okay. a really good question, I can of course interrupt any time myself. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> I don't know how you. I mean, you can either say, "Look, I'll, I'll answer them at the end," um, mm -hmm. and or if something catches my eye, I'll interrupt myself and, mm -hmm. and go forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds good. Or or I, or I can just you know not say how it will be handled, but just saying you know. Um, but just just before getting into the story, I would yeah, like to exactly. invite you, yeah, exactly. to 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 ask me anything. This is called Ask Audrey Anything, um, and uh, just go to Slido.com on your phone or any internet connecting device and enter today's date, which is one o two nine, and enter your question anonymously or like others people's questions. And now back to the story. Um, is something that like, something like right? that? Okay. Right. Well, that's that's a okay bridge. I think that's a good bridge. I really do. Hey, by the way, what's the title of your presentation? Um, Stories from the Future of Democracy. Okay, I love it. The MozFest folks, they like to know what the titles are mm -hmm. ahead of um, Okay, good. So let me, so what, let's keep going. Okay, now again, you're going to speak a little more slowly or add a pause. Mm -hmm. You're going to use voice for vocal inflection. Mm -hmm emotion where possible. Mm -hmm. you, can overdo, you can overdo it. It's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Serious, let me see. Oh, can I use the bathroom for one minute? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. What five languages do you speak, by the way? Uh, Taiwanese Holok, uh, and then Taiwanese uh, Mandarin, and then uh, Germany, uh, German, and then a little bit of French, which I, I have completely forgotten now, and English. That's the sequence. I think I forgot French completely when I learned English. Anyway, so um, unlike many people. So do I just start saying, unlike many people? Let's start with your, yeah, start with your, I, you want mm -hmm. to pop your deck up or do you not want to? Or should I watch you? 
let's do it. Well, oh, you want to start? You want to start from the top? Let's do it. Yeah, sure. Let's, yep, definitely. Unlike many people, I am an optimist today, and I've always been an optimist, but especially when I dropped out of high, junior high school back in 1996 when I was 15 years old. I discovered this infinite worldwide web, on which there's no. It's it's run down sentences again. Unlike many people today, unlike many hey, people let, today. Do, do I, let me let me give you something. Yes. Say. Um, uh, this when you say. Uh, When you introduce, I'm an optimist. You should say this strange condition began when I was 15 years old. Thank you. Okay? That's great. Strange condition. This strange condition. That's great. Okay. So I say it like I'm an autist, right? This strange condition. Okay. So <laughs> okay. Um, unlike many people today, I'm an optimist. The strange condition began when I was 15 years old. That was 1996, when the World Web was first invented. I discovered this shiny new thing and saw that the future of human knowledge is on it compared to the pale textbooks. And I told my teachers that I want to quit school and start my education on the World Web. Surprisingly, the teachers all agree with it. And so、um, I started founding a startup, working on web technologies, and I get to learn this fabulous community who all run with this crazy idea of this anarchistic, no one was in control, political system that powers the internet till today. So today I'm Taiwan's first digital minister. I'm putting into practice the same rough consensus, civic participation, radical transparency ideas that I learned when I was 15 years old. And surprisingly, it's working and it's transforming our society. So, in the spirit of participation, I would like to ask you to put your phone and enter Slido.com, and ask me questions, ask me anything by entering one o two nine. That's today's date on the browser, and I will answer them after this ten minute talk. In twenty fourteen, there was the first demo scene of. The radical participation idea. We occupied the parliament for 22 days. At the time, the MPs in Taiwan were refusing to deliberate a trade service agreement with Beijing, and because the MPs were on strike, we got into the parliament at night and demonstrated how to deliberate a trade service agreement with everybody. It's called. How long, did, how long did that go for? Was that for twenty-four days or just one night? Twenty-two days. Over for twenty-two days, we demonstrated how you negotiate、okay. trade. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. And twenty-two、um, days, we demonstrated how to discuss a how to deliberate a trade service agreement with the whole society. There was over twenty NGOs participating: the Greens, the Labors, the Separatists, everybody.、Uh, but the key point here is that we supported. This whole deliberation was a radically transparent broadcasting, live streaming, logistics system, which we exported to Hong Kong for the Umbrella Revolution, by the way, and it's powered by this community called Gov Zero. Gov Zero is a community with the call to fork the government. We take the government websites, which all ends in gov.tw, and make better open alternatives, and ends in g0v.tw. So if there's any website that anyone in Taiwan doesn't like, they can just create a fork of the version and abandon the copyright. So the so the country in the next procurement cycle can just include and merge back these ideas. So when the state, when the parliament doesn't deliberate this kind of thing, instead of protesting against it, we thought maybe we can do it better. And so there were thousands of civic hackers at the time working on the street. Just to make facilitation possible, and make everyone who care about trade service agreement put their input over the phone, over the web, over anywhere, or just walk into one of the booths we set up. And I think this is not a coincidence that we have so many free software civic hackers, because as I said, back in 1996, when World Web was first invented, it's also our first presidential election. 
There was 30 years of martial law, and we are the first generation that has both democracy and the internet. So free software to us never means free of cost, because our parents' generation paid dearly for the freedom of assembly, of the freedom of speech. And so this is why we were able to run this occupy completely peacefully and agree on a set of consensus that the head of the parliament eventually agreed to. So it was ended peacefully, and the whole society learns that there is a way for people to deliberate at scale. And so after the occupy, there's many cities adopting the same methods, and the national government has a changed leadership. The new prime minister. Uh, said, you know, crowdsourcing, civic hacking, everything is just going to be the national agenda. And so we civic hackers were recruited to solve one of the most interesting policy problems at that year, which is the Uber problem. And this is wait, not. Are you, are you, so wait, yeah. are you telling me that the Occupy movement caused the government to rethink what it was doing? Yes, and a change of leadership and all of the the major cities' mayorships. So that was actually very major, right? It's a revolution, but peaceful. Okay. Yeah. You you need to you need to say that in your transition. Okay. okay. This this you know this caused a, a a revolution, although a peaceful revolution.、Mm -hmm. This was a radical transformation. That and the election of ninth of two thousand and fifteen, whenever it was.、Yeah. Okay. To, well, here's end of twenty fourteen, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what、uh, happened.、Mm -hmm. okay? okay. They did. They did that.、Mm -hmm. They did this. Okay. Now we're going into Uber. Okay. Okay. So、um, yeah. So let me just fill it up.、Um, so at the election at the end of 2014, many occupiers just find themselves mayors when they didn't、um, expect it. It turns out there's a radical shift in the society. People start demanding for open government, and and everyone who campaigned for open government magically became mayors,、uh, much to their surprise. And so because of this, the prime minister resigned. And the new prime minister in Indonesia said, "Okay, from now on, crowdsourcing, open data is just going to be the national direction." Does that work better? Something like that. Yeah,、okay. yeah. I don't think、okay. I don't think it's magical though.、Mm -hmm. When you use the word magical, I don't think、okay. it's magical. Okay. So、um, yeah, so let's go to Uber.、Um, so at the time, there's this very interesting. Hold on. Yeah. Before, before we go to Uber. Yes. So that was how that was how this changed the government. Yes. Okay. What is the story of Uber? What are you telling me? How this opened the doors to what negotiation? You tell me. What What are we talking about with Uber? Yes. So at a time,、um, so instead of going to the presentation,、um, I'm explaining it now.、Um, sure. Yeah, at、okay. the time, Uber was operating illegally、um, in many different、uh, jurisdictions and causing a lot of protests and、um, taxi drivers surrounding ministries everywhere and so on. And there's very little a sovereign state can do about it. For example, the Paris city they seized the Uber's office and confiscated all their equipments. But it's just an app; it just kept running. So、um, it is actually a very challenging problem for any national、uh, government to solve. And so,、um, so that's that's the lead. Actually, it can also go into the presentation itself.、So, yeah. So, right. but,、uh, yes. But, but, as, okay, keep going. Let me hear.、It. Keep going. Okay. Right. So,、um, yeah, as I mentioned,、um, there's very little actually what a sovereign state can do about Uber because it's an app, and、uh, to me, it's a meme. A meme. It's called sharing economy. By the way, at the time,、uh, it, the meme essentially means that algorithms dispatch cars better than laws, so we don't have to obey laws.、Um, and this meme is very powerful. It's like a, a flu of the mind, a virus of the mind. If you catch a Uber and you catch this meme, chances are that you will spread it to other drivers and other passengers. And if a driver suddenly discovers after a couple of weeks that it's actually not working, well, they've already passed it on. So just like any other epidemic,、um, it really made、um, a, a, a pandemonium.、Um, is a not a very、yes. good word. Or well, a pandemonium、uh, of the of the taxi drivers、uh, industry in Taiwan and everywhere in the world. And the taxi drivers、um, surrounded the Ministry of Transport, demanding negotiation. But the thing is this. 
you can't negotiate with a virus of the mind. It's in a different category. You can't negotiate with flu either,、uh, right?、Um, the the idea is that if this idea gets caught、um, and like a meme spreads to sufficient people, it will just keep Uber running. So to solve this problem, we thought about the way we did during the Occupy is through deliberation, because we think deliberation is a inoculation. Of the mind, it inoculates after sitting down and listening to everybody's sides about everyone's ideas and coming to terms with a consensus. It inoculates people against future PRs. It inoculates people against future、um, incitements、uh, from Uber or from any other、um, agency. So I think we think it's essential that we get all the stakeholders and get them to sit down and agree on a set of consensus. And we do this through the focus conversation method. The focus conversation method means that we first collect everybody's facts, and then we collect everybody's feelings about the same set of facts. There's the same set of fact. I may feel happy, you may feel angry, and it's all okay. After we get everybody's feelings represented, then we ask for people's ideas. We brainstorm, and the best idea are the ideas that address the most people's feelings. And then we ratify the ideas. We translate them into legalese and sign them into law. What prevented the before? I would say before. Before the focused conversation method, usually the government, the private sector, and individual academics use an expert language to talk about policy, while not letting the people on the street know what they are talking about. But that doesn't prevent people from on the street from talking about it. It's just they develop a different set of language and actually disagree on the same set of basic facts. And without the same set of basic facts, people become unable to empathize with each other's feelings. And ideas in this environment grows into something very dangerous. They grow into ideologies. Once people are infected with ideologies, they become blind to new facts. They become blind to each other's feelings, and this is what we set out to solve. So, when planning the Uber deliberation, not only the government publish all the relevant transport data as open data, we also ask the private sector and the civil society to contribute to this pool of facts. And then we use machine learning—that's artificial intelligence this year.、Uh, we use AI、uh, to help facilitating people's feelings. What you're seeing here is my avatar. Sitting among my Twitter friends and Facebook friends, and we all have something to say about Uber. The thing is, when you enter this Polis website, it shows one sentiment. I'll translate this to English, by the way,、uh, which you can agree or disagree. And as you agree or disagree, your position moves on this two-dimensional map that represents all the possible different sides that people are taking toward Uber. And the interesting thing is, it lowers people's.、Um, Antagonism is that the English word?、Uh, it doesn't、yes. yeah, antagonize against each other because you see all of these people on different sides are your Facebook and Twitter friends. You just didn't talk about this over dinner. And second, it shows that over three weeks of time, people can actually converge to the center. At the beginning, the people were all on the side, but because we say we only give binding power of anything that people can propose that convince a supermajority, that's eighty percent of people. People compete to bring better ideas that resonate not only with like-minded people but across the aisle. So by the end of three weeks, we have seven ideas that very strongly、uh, resonated with everybody, such as insurance, such as tax paying, registration, and so on. And we just translated that into law. And can before, I, yes. Can I can I ask you a question? Yes. Can you go back two slides, please. Yes. That slide. No, 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 no. The next, go forward one. No, go forward. The other one. Yes. So you said that this, after three weeks, it actually moved people's positions, right?、Yes. Is there a slide that shows how the aggregate looked before and after? Oh yeah, I can. I can produce that. Yeah. I'd really like to see that. It would be very helpful. Like, like visually aggregating to the yes. To、like、the I'm、center. assuming. I don't know what I'm looking at here, and maybe I need two more slides. Like here's where we were when we began.、Mm -hmm. Is where we are, where we were after the deliberations.、Okay. Very interesting.、Okay. Very interesting. I think, I think that would help、um, really articulate it in the mind of the viewer. Okay, that's great. Yeah.、Um, okay, so yeah, after well, three well, weeks.、Uh, this is a great、okay. example, by the、mm -hmm. way. I like this example so much more than the dot 
gov example, this is very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about it. Keep going, please. Keep going. Okay. This is very good. Well, I, I can take the GovZero part out. No, uh, no I don't want you to take it out. I don't want you okay. to take it out. I want you to keep going. All right. So, um, right. So after we get everybody's feelings and a set of seven feelings that resonates with practically everybody, they may be taxi drivers, they may be Uber drivers, everybody agrees on those things. It's now much easier for the government to meet with all the stakeholders and check with them one by one. Here is the consensus of the people. Do you agree? And if you do agree, how do we translate that into law? So after the live consultation, which is live streamed and people had input just as you're doing now through their f mobile phones, uh, we ratified uh, a set of regulations. And Uber cannot help, um, you know, but, well, cannot help. It's actually well, not, not, Uber, was, Uber was a part of the ratification? They agreed? Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Okay, so yeah. they, they couldn't help but agree. Yeah, so, yeah, so they... So they couldn't, well, couldn't help but agree. Well, anyway, so yeah, Uber. They could not yeah. help but agree. They In could not words, help but have agree. To agree, basically. There was, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so they're, they're bound uh, to the words they said during the live consultation, and they agreed. So when we ratified um, this in August 2016, everybody knew that it's coming, everybody anticipated it, and Uber now operates legally in Taipei, but so did the taxi companies who are now all adopting the same models that Uber is using for dispatching its cars. So that's the second story. Um, I'll just pause a little bit here. Um, I remember you saying, but there's a rub. Do I literally say, but there's a rub? Well, a rub is, um, there's a downside, basically. Okay, okay. That's what I mean when right. I say that. Okay. Go on. Right, so, but but it's not, it's, it's not all, okay, so ratification uh, at the end, uh, and everybody will, okay. However, um, right. however. There's a rub. Try, but there's a okay. rub. See how it works. Uh -huh. let's try, let's see. But there's a rub. This process is very expensive. Um, we put maybe a dozen full-timers and a lot of mediators, volunteers also, to, who um, run this process over the preparation was three months or so. And it was experimental, of course. People all wanted uh, to see whether the techniques we had in Occupy can work for a national deliberation. It did work, but it was very expensive. And as a consequence, the public servants, the bureaucrats, are somewhat turned, do I say turned off? Do I say uh, shied away? Do I say afraid? Become kind of afraid. If, uh, if, if all the policy making needs to be, how expensive was it? Um, it's maybe 20 full-time staff on the government side for three months, 20 volunteers on the civil society side for three months. So it's very involved. So, but what's the, I want to say it's expensive. I guess I want to say it's expensive, but what's the cost of not doing it? How expensive is it to not come to, how expensive is it to not come to agreement if you're hiring lawyers? I mean, is it really expensive compared to lawyers and lawsuits and endless, I don't know. I'm just asking. Right, right. So, so maybe I shouldn't say expensive. I would say it demanded a lot of commitment or well, something like that. What, 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 were they complaining about money or were they complaining about time? They're, they're complaining about time. Um, like, like they had to put, put down other things that they are doing. Yeah. So it is. It's, it's, it's time consuming, definitely. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's super time consuming. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super time consuming. Go for it. Okay. So it's super time consuming. Right. Okay. Go on. And we thought, but there's... We thought, but there's a lot of different ways that we can improve on this to scale uh, this process of listening and automate a lot of this stuff that we had real human beings doing, like collecting people's ideas and re uh, responding to them and so on. All these could presumably be automated by machine intelligence. And so this is, this is why I was hired uh, right after the ratification as the digital minister uh, of Taiwan. And we started this public digital innovation space, PDIS. It's like the GDS or USDS in the US, or, well, maybe it's 
not so good to make comparison like this. Anyway, so we start at Petis. It's a it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing to do, by the okay. way. I mean, Wherever you can help me understand what it is, right. it's useful. So it's like okay. the government digital service in the UK or the US digital service in the US. It's a digital service of the national level. And we have designers, we have programmers, we have a lot of young people working to automate away a lot of those chores that the public servants are doing in order to make participation possible. But I think even more interesting than the technological contributions we're doing is the culture that we're bringing. So I'm a radically transparent digital minister. And by that, I mean that all the journalists, all the lobbyists, everybody get to ask me questions, but only publicly. I get, ans I get questions from a private email. I will reply and say, if it's okay to give my answers publicly. And if not, well, I just give them links to what my previous statements are. So because of this culture of radical transparency, um, to my knowledge, uh, I'm the only one in the world in the national government doing this. Um, it's not just to the lobbyists and journalists, but also for internal meetings. For all the hundreds of internal meetings that I have since I was the digital minister, everything was transcribed. There was a uh, written record for every, everything everybody said during meetings, and we send them to participants after, uh, afterwards to check for 10 days and publish. And the effect of this is very surprising. The bureaucrats actually become very innovative and uh, risk-taking. They propose some very good ideas under this condition. But that's because previously, before I introduced this kind of radical transparency, they would get a blame if things go wrong, and the minister would get a credit if things go right. But now, with this completely accountable uh, record, if things go right, well, they get a credit because their name is on the transcript. And because this is an experimental method, if things go wrong, well, it's all the digital minister's fault. So under this condition, they become very innovative and open to a lot of interesting ideas. And one of the idea is adopting this thoroughly free software platform called Sandstorm as our public service internal platform. We use the same um, tools like Etherpad, like Trello, like uh, Slack, like, you know, how the free software community is organizing ourselves these days. We also use it in the public service. Previously, the roadblock was the cybersecurity issue, but we were able to find this community platform called Sandstorm that solves the cybersecurity problem. It gets audited by our cybersecurity department so that all the free software that runs on top of it doesn't suffer from cybersecurity attacks and issues. So we were able to adopt a lot of free software working methods just by adopting this Sandstorm um, free software platform. Uh, can I yeah? ask you? Yeah. Can I interrupt you for? Yeah, and sure, sure. My own ignorance. What's the virtue of using free software? Is it simply to save money, or is there, is there a larger philosophical issue that you're that you're concerned with? Well, it, there is, of course, saving money because for the 60,000 public servants uh, to pay for a per se license is impossible. Uh, impossible. For, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So and, it's yeah. And, and there, it, there's also, uh, because it's first free software, uh, we're not dependent on any vendors. So if any public servant uh, doesn't like the system we're using and they can code, uh, they just contribute and make the system a little bit better. So they, you need they, to, I think you need to explain that, okay? Yes. First of all, that there are 60,000 members and 60,000 licenses. No one was going to pay for that. Okay? That's right. So that was a roadblock that we just overcame with mm -hmm. this. Second is, if you don't like the software and you can code, change it. Or find some 12-year-old who can change it for you, right? Something mm -hmm. like that? That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, I, yeah. to, I think it's important to say that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, and we have a lot of... Um, interesting system proposed by young public servants like the, a system to order lunch together or to plan travels together or whatever, right? It's just really no, solves that, one of the chores. It's yeah. a great deal. It actually mm -hmm. brings people together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now we have a free software community inside the national government. Um, and the, well, how do I bridge into this? Well, and also we had an e-petition platform. Um, as a way to, for people to participate, it was like the We the People platform in the U.S., um, but it really didn't receive much attention before I was the digital minister because people would get this, those very blank, very bureaucratic um, answers that doesn't really solve their problems but just explains the problems. 
And the reason why is that often when people propose something, it touches many different ministries. And so the one ministry designated to answer for it can only answer for the little part that it has uh, in this policy suggestion. But after I become the digital minister, we asked each ministry to send a team, at least one person, to serve as participation officer. We assembled this virtual team of 50 people online using Slack, using all those online tools, and train them to face the people directly. So now in Taiwan, when people start to get a petition, they know instead of a written um, nonsensical response from any minister, they will actually get to meet with all the relevant ministries, either in Taipei, where the capital is, or we will fly to those rural areas and islands if they are petitioning for a local development. So we were able to solve a lot of very interesting problems like this without the, any ministry committing too much people to it. So that re relieved their fear, uncertainty, and doubt um, since the time when we did the Uber deliberation. Because this time, everything was automated. They only put one or two people forward, and they still get a pretty good result. So a little, that got a little long to the yeah, end. Indeed. I think this section should be a little shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is what you're doing is, I mean, you said it was a, a nonsensical response. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the right word. I think it's a bland and bureaucratic response mm -hmm. that no one, no one believes anymore. Right. It just mm -hmm. feels, it just feels dutiful. If you know that word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Dutiful right. is great. Dutiful is a great word. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, no passion, no conviction, right? Just con a dutiful, boring response. This actually got people to engage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the point. Are you talking about engagement? Is that what you're talking about? That's right, that's right. Get to that. Okay. Let's get to that. This should be a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep going, please. Okay, so I just keep go to the other slide. Well, I, I don't know, I, I interrupted you, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. but No, no I, it's I, fine, I, it's fine, yeah. Okay, so where's, where are we next? What's the next slide? Uh, well, it's the ending, actually. It's just another minute after this. Right, so, um, so the idea is that voting and collectivism is every, very easy. Everybody can do it like four bits every four years, but it's not much bits. Or we can do hacktivism and occupy the parliament and exercise agenda-setting power and transform the society, but we cannot do that for every policy issue. So we need to build a ladder between the two polar opposites. We need to build a sharing of open data. We need to build uh, interactive public Q&A forums. And that's where we're at at the moment. We, we bring the technology to people instead of asking disadvantaged people to use technology. And we can build a deliberation system that scales to all the local communities, the regional community, and the national policymaking community for everything. And the best thing is that this process itself is in the commons. So you don't have to go through the Taiwan. Yeah. The process Absolutely. itself is free. The, the process itself is, is, is a free software project. So, sure. right. So um, the process itself is, is a free software project. So you don't have to go through the Taiwanese government if you want to run it for your local government. You can just take our code and process and fork it. So anyone anywhere on us can run this idea of, yeah, and, of taking something like a non-resolvable singularity uh, and turn it over into what we call a plurality that will listen to one side and the, then the other side across the time dimension, resolving our differences and eventually know what we ask of any specific technology instead of having the technology dictating what we do. And we, I think we need to build a unified democracy, not hijacked by ideologies. We need to build a efficient democracy that respond to the demands of the environment and a pragmatic democracy that would let people take care of each other's feelings. We do this just by listening and building technologies that help us listen to each other. Thank you for listening. Beautiful. Um, you call it a pragmatic. Mm -hmm. I, call it, I call it empathetic. Empathetic, that's, that's much better. Because pragmatic is practical, but with the hearts, you're thinking empathetic, which is that I can hear you. Mm -hmm. I actually hear you. Mm -hmm. That's a radical idea these days, as you know, mm -hmm. right? Nobody's listening anymore, mm -hmm. right?
Yes. It's very inspiring. Um, I, I want to go back to the .gov part, the very first section, yes. please. Yes. This, this part. is great. This is great. You're really mm. great. Thank you. So, so this so we is the Occupy. Get that. Move to the next one, please. And this talks about how many sites there is, the Sunflower yeah. movement, and we're able to scale the deliberation by deploying uh, civic technology from the GovZero movement. So, so this is fork, which mm -hmm. means, so tell me, and just look at me and tell me. So, mm -hmm. okay, so if I, 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 I got lost where this is, I mean, it got very technical. This is going no, to... No, no, it, no, it's okay. Yeah. Well, tell me in English, just tell me simply to me, what this means, okay? Okay. What, what's the impact of this? What's the power of this? So the GovZero movement is this idea that instead of blaming the government for not doing something right, the civil society can do a prototype and do that thing well to show the government how to do it. I see. Yeah. Um, and so we did that for many different government websites. Can you give me an example? Sure. One one example. One example. Um, well, the canonical example is that the annual national budget is 500 pages long. It's a PDF. Nobody actually read it. And the GovZero people, the very first project was this budget, the GovZero.tw, which shows the uh, national budget in a way that everybody understands. Uh, and I can actually open it here. Fabulous. Uh, Chinese, but I hope it works. It yeah, it works. Doesn't. Right, it doesn't matter. So, um, right. So, what 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 this does is that it shows the the national budget uh, according to every different ministries and showing the ones that's uh, raising year after year in green and decreasing um, year after year in red. And the uh, bubbles correspond to the size of the budget. And if you click on each one, you see it shows the nitty gritty details. And you can also switch to the bird's eye view um, that lets you, um, well, it's taking its time, but yes. So you can drill down to each and every uh, budget details. Um, and after the GovZero did this, uh, and after the Occupy and after the election, uh, the Taipei city government, the newly elected mayor, uh, a occupier himself, just copy and pasted this whole thing to Taipei's budget program as the participatory budget platform for the Taipei city. So um, anyone can just look at any one part of the Taipei city budget on this map and type in any question they want to ask, and a career public servant actually comes to the forum and answer for that part of the question. So it becomes a direct dialogue platform, not through the city council, but for the career public servants with the people. This is, this is so much clearer to me than what you said before. Yeah, sure. yeah please use the example, okay? Yes. yes. Please use that visual. It's, it's fantastic. It's clear. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost fun mm -hmm. to turn a budget of that size into something that's engaging and fun. That's mm -hmm. quite, and that was, that was done by um, a bunch of hackers? Yeah, that's, that's the beginning of the GovZero movement. And then we start doing that for every other website as well. Really yeah. great. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a much more powerful example. I think in one of the sheets I send you, it, it says that the specific is always more memorable mm -hmm. than the abstract, okay? okay? You don't have too much abstraction. That was the abstraction that I got really lost on, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think you need to exemplify everything, but mm -hmm. I think that is a perfect way of going from words mm -hmm. to pictures to clarity. Okay, right? that's great. Anything else I need to improve on? Well, I mean, I think you're, you're brilliant. What is it that you want to improve on? So you just walked me through it. Mm -hmm. what, felt, what felt like you want to strengthen it? What did you want to strengthen? What did you feel that you want to change, basically. Mm. When you were talking, was there any place where you thought, oh, eh, 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 not so strong? Well, um, as you mentioned, um, the participation office part, I can cut it by half and I'll work oh. on it. Uh, and I think the, the bridge from the, you know, and now it's transforming our society, 
But before I tell you about it, I'd like to invite your participation. That this part didn't feel that natural, but I think after I don't, I don't know. How, I mean, I'm telling. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. um, I maybe there are more elegant ways of doing it, but I don't know. I just think people like to be invited to do things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yeah. Maybe By the way, it's just wait. I have one more question for yes. you. So this is a pretty clear clicked on audience, pretty smart audience. What do you want from them in the end? I mean, do you want to know people? Do you want to know ideas? Do you want to bring this to other places? Or is your goal simply to convey information about what's going on? Well, see, I, I'm not attending there in person, right? So so the I think I, I would like to make connections to people working in the civil society, especially in the local level government, uh, local organizers who can much easier uh, deploy this kind of methodology than national government, which is very difficult. Um, well, why, don't, yeah. why, don't you end, why don't you end with your request or your okay. call to action, okay? And... Mm -hmm. End with something, you know, look, you started out as an optimist. You want, maybe mm -hmm. you want to spread a little optimism around the world, mm -hmm. okay? And do that. Maybe it's helpful to be in touch with people who are doing similar yeah, things. Yeah, but, but, but I can do that in the Q&A. I don't have to do it in the first 10 minutes. No, not at all. I'm talking yeah. about a wrap, an end to this presentation, yes. okay? Yes. Just something like ask. I mean, this is a pretty smart audience of, mm -hmm. from around the world. So you have a good idea to I, – I think it could be useful if you want mm -hmm. to – Ask them, who, you know, who you, who it is you're looking to connect with. That's it. Okay. It's a thought. Okay. It's a thought. I'll keep it in mind. Um, mm -hmm. Keep it in mind. I hope this has been useful to you. Has it been useful to you? Yeah, super useful. Um, good. You have the recording also, right? Yes. Uh, and I was just about to ask you whether you feel comfortable publishing the transcript, the text of what we just talked about. A hundred percent. Okay. What about the video? Did you did you video me? Yeah, well, depending on like I recorded a whole two hours and Absolutely. what? Yeah, you're okay with me just publishing the whole thing? Of course I am. I mean, this is about process. I okay. mean, what I do with you is what I do with everyone. I okay. work in. You know, this is um, this is what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Um. And you were good enough to share your content with me and mm -hmm. be open to change your content. Mm -hmm. Um. And I gave you my honest feedback, of course. Mm -hmm. of course. Well, that, that's great. And then the whole thing will be on YouTube then. I'll send that's you awesome. a link. Please link to me. Yeah, send me yeah. my name, tag me properly. Yes, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I've never had that done before. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Right. So um, I'll, I think I'll, I'll have to work on the vocal modulation a lot more to just get it just right, like not 30% uh, more. Um, yeah. But because this work. is pre-recording anyway, so I've got plenty of chance of retakes. And, and don't be inauthentic. Don't mm -hmm. not be yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. I just want to encourage you that you have an instrument that you can use to, to your own effect, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You can use it more mindfully to get mm -hmm. what you want to bring power to your language. Okay, okay. I'll definitely I mean, you're, do that. You're a powerful woman, mm -hmm. you have powerful ideas, mm -hmm. and I want to express them mm -hmm. in English. It's not your first language mm -hmm. as powerful as possible. Okay. Really. Um, I, I hope someday, somewhere in the world, I meet you. Okay. Yeah. Same here. Um, it's been a great two hours. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you for sharing with mm -hmm. me, okay? Cheers. Bye-bye.